Hello, beloved brethren. I've got some great stuff here for you. It's I gotta get started because it's gonna be amazing. Um, the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has just revealed some some stuff that is going to just oh my goodness! Get your Bible, beloved brethren. <laughs> this is huge. Okay, first of all, let's remember that God built the temple, the third temple. Psalms 127 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Psalms 122 says, Let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the week that the Feast of Tabernacles. They were already tabernacling with God in Christ. We are in Christ. And He is in us, the hope of glory, walking in our heart. Heaven is by the Spirit. The Spirit is heaven, and the Spirit is in us, and He walks in our heart, it says in the Scriptures. So the temple of the Lord is Christ, and we are the temple of the Lord. Each one of us, living stones in that temple, built up a heavenly house, beloved. A, a, I mean, a spiritual house. But the Lord in heaven remains forever, it says in the Scriptures. The Son of Man, Son of God, remains forever. And we being in Him beloved were built up a spiritual house this is a spiritual city new jerusalem we are living stones old things have passed away and all things have become new okay so this is the temple of the lord which temple we are and the scriptures say that if anyone destroys this temple that person god will destroy so there's many persons that are running about to destroy the temple and god is going to destroy them all right so um in the scriptures it says in the Psalms of David, there are set thrones of judgment. Now, what is this judgment, beloved? We judge righteously by the word. We don't judge by our own thoughts or our own heart or our own understanding. We judge by the word of God and by the, the spirit understanding. God's spirit gives, gives us understanding like he gave the understanding to his apostles. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, um, in Isaiah... 34 16 17 he said seek ye out of the book of the lord this is at the very end the book that you see in revelation of jesus christ the word of god the one that takes the book from him that sits on the throne the word of god it's a spiritual city remember beloved and this spiritual city jesus is on the throne of david with us opening the books the books are open now mystery babylon is revealed beloved a lot of the brethren do not know who Mystery Babylon is yet, but we're going to reveal it to you, beloved. Once that prophecy that Jesus had prophesied of Mystery Babylon at the end, Matthew, uh, Revelation 17, Revelation of Jesus Christ, 17, 18, and throughout to the end, um, we see there is Mystery Babylon, and then we see the spiritual, that's a spiritual city, the great city, J Jesus said, and then you have New Jerusalem, the spiritual city also. We are a spiritual city. We are a spiritual house. 1 Corinthians 15, we're bearing the living stones here on earth, but we're spiritual, beloved. We're dead with Christ, dead to the old man, okay? We are no longer of that old man. We are now living stones uh, in the because Jesus is resurrected. We have our justification in him, praise the Lord, the scriptures say. And we're preserved in him, not in our own, we're preserved in Christ, as uh, Epistle Jude says. We're sanctified by God the Father and preserved in, in Christ Jesus, okay? This is super important for the brethren to understand the temple of the Lord that God has built. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And our works, as John 3 says, are wrought in God. What is God? God is a spirit. What is God? God is his word spoken to his people by the spirit. Hallelujah. And we see that's one of our armor, part of our armor of the armor of God that we put on in Ephesians 6. And we're supposed to make supplication for our brethren. And as Ephesians 6 says, this is very important because you're going to see how important it is to pray for the saints, to pray for the lost, to pray for all men. Because here's the thing. God calls all men to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. All men have been under bondage, beloved, um, in prison. And remember, uh, even the centurions who were holding some of the people prisons, the people of God, some of them got saved, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is our prayer, is that all nations would have peace. It says in Jeremiah, and this is how you know true Israel judging in true righteousness, because 
uh, Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7 says this. So said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exile which I have exiled from Jerusalem. What was Jerusalem? Jesus said what Jerusalem is. Jesus said, mother of us all. Jerusalem is mother above. Jerusalem above is mother of us all. Those who do the will of my father. So we're not talking about Jerusalem that's in bondage with her children. Remember, Jesus said that Jerusalem is in bondage with her children. They're bound. They're of Hagar. Their seed is of Hagar in sin and death. Um, and so this, he's talking about the free woman that gets freed, okay? But he says that I have ex exiled from Jerusalem to Babylon, all right, to Babylon. Build houses and dwell therein and plant gardens, vineyards, and eat their produce. This does not mean eat people, beloved. This is this is just eating of the you know, you built you plant gardens, you eat the food the food. He calls it produce, okay? So that's not flesh, that's not grass, that's not the blood of man. But there are men that do and women that do drink the blood and eat the flesh against God's word. In Leviticus it says life's in the blood. Don't drink the blood. Don't eat the flesh. That's a law of God in the Torah. In the Ta a Tanakh. We're supposed to eat produce. That's like fruit that you get off of a tree here. Okay. <laughs> Seek peace of the city. Where I have exiled you and pray for it to the Lord. For in its peace you shall have peace. So we pray for the cities, we pray for the nations, we pray for the people that they would have peace. We pray for all men that they would have peace. Even those people in Jerusalem who are rebelling against God and don't believe in God, okay? Matthew 23, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. All right, they're in bondage. They're in gall of bitterness and iniquity. Now, we don't pray for them, um that have taken the mark of the beast. We pray for them who repent and believe that Jesus is the Christ. So it says, Seek the peace of the city where I have exiled you and pray for it to the Lord. For in its peace, you shall have peace. And it says in the scriptures that, I mean, the Lord is saying that they're rebelling against God. Okay, they don't know him and they're rebelling against him. This is one of those scriptures that proves that they are rebelling against God. Because what are they doing? They're doing witchcraft on the nations. The scriptures say, let's go to the next part. Praise our Lord for this understanding. Remember, all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. But they do it in sincerity, right? Sincerely believing, all right? Um, so, this is going to be amazing. And I hope I get it done in time. Okay, Acts 12. Is that what the first one? So I was reading this morning um, 1 Peter. See, and God gives the word in the time that he had planned for us to understand something at that time. Because remember, the books are open to us and he's giving us our understanding. So turn with me to 1 Peter 5.13, beloved. 1 Peter 5.13. And he says, The church that is at A.T. Babylon elected together with you so the church that is at babylon the church is not in babylon they're at babylon now go with me now to acts 12 let's read the whole thing now about that time herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church herod was of rome he wants to harass the church so people who harass the church, trouble the church, vex the church, these are, their hearts are not right with God. And in fact, they're in the gall of bitterness and bonds of iniquity. Because where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Why are they vexing the church? Because of the love of money, the root of all evil, and the love to oppress others in order to make themselves above others. So they're harassing the church. Verse 2, And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it, pleased the Jews. Verse 3 is very important of Acts chapter 12. Herod was seeking to please who? His God? No. 
or was it his God? He was seeking to please the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Now remember that Saul, who was pleasing the Jews also, was killing Christians. And he had scales over his eyes and his ears after he had had a, had a, um, a vision of Jesus or an experience with Jesus. He saw his light, his brightness. And what happened when he saw his brightness? He became blinded by the scales that were over his eyes and his ears. Because who blinds their eyes and ears lest they hear and see the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ? It's Satan, the serpent, the, the devil. Scales of pride. But he was not like son of perdition Judas Iscariot, who loved money and sold the whereabouts of Jesus because he had spent time with Jesus and then he spied him out. That's a really bad thing. That's a son of perdition. Took money. All right. Uh, Saul was in ignorance. He was doing it in ignorance. Once he realized it, he repented. He believed that Jesus was the Christ and then he did not do it anymore. He went and he followed Jesus, right? He listen to what the apostle said and then he followed the words of God and God had prepared him for a a service he became Paul praise the Lord people want to take the books of Paul out because these certain people who are blinded by the serpent the devil the dragon they think that you know they think that Paul you know was crazy and that he you know they know that he believed in Jesus and that he saw the truth so verse 3 he saw it, pleased the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. So <laughs> Herod is after God's people, Barnabas and Saul, who are the church. So Barnabas and Saul are the church. And Herod and the Jews that wanted to, the, the Herod that wanted to please the Jews to take Peter, Barnabas, and Saul to the elders by the hands of Barnabas. Wait, wait. Which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas. No, he, he vexed the church and killed James and John. I guess the whole church was being vexed. So, and killed James and John. And then was um, further to take Peter. So, James and John were killed to the apostles of Jesus Christ. And then Peter was vexed. So, Herod, being of Rome, vexed Peter to please the Jews. And... The Roman Catholic Church today claims to be of Peter. But Peter of the Romans were vexed. Peter was vexed by the Roman king, Herod. Because he wanted, Herod, King Herod, wanted to please the Jews. So he took Peter also. And when he had apprehended, now this is very important. Babylon is Herod. The king, Herod, and the Jews is Babylon. The elect lady is the church, which is James, John, and Peter. So you have the church and then all those that believe that are with them. Getting vexed and harassed by Herod, the Roman king, and because he wanted to please the Jews. Very important information for the time we live in now. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. I'll remind you guys of an experience I had where I was in the spirit. And I was getting people out of this prison in the spirit. Because remember, Mystery Babylon is a spiritual city. Remember, New Jerusalem is a spiritual city. And we are of the elect lady, the woman, the church, who is not under deceit or guile. We are the first fruit unto God. We are a spiritual city. A spiritual household built up unto God. That God built. Not man. So I was getting these people out of prison. This prison. And we passed by this big guard. And he looked like the predator on the movie Predator. Look up the predator. Look at the guard. That's what he looked like. And he had these other prisoners he was taking into prison. And he looked at me. This creepy, ugly face. Looked at me. And then... I had all these people, they got scared of him and they came and clung to me and they like got real close to me. 
And I said, don't worry, don't fear. He can't do anything to us. And then he looked back at his people and I said, follow me. So the people I was getting out of prison, I said, follow me. And I, I went and this, this iron gate, we went through. I opened it up and we went through this iron gate. And I took them through the city on these streets to the middle of the city. And at the middle of the city, there was this massive cross. And it was glowing bright as a star. Bright. And I brought them to the, the cross. That's giving the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was giving people the gospel. They were in pray, chains and bondage. And I was giving them the gospel. And they were getting out of prison. Or they were Christians who were getting the truth of the word of God. And Satan had, like Peter and James and John, have been taken prisoner, captive. We're getting them out too. Believers um, who might be in Babylon. Jesus said, come out of her, my people. We're called to come out of her. We're not supposed to be in her. We're supposed to be in Christ. Hallelujah, right? Christ in us, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. So, and delivered him to four quarantines of soldiers to keep him. Now, this is one of the soldiers I saw. Remember, they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit. So these things are monsters, creatures. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Verse 5 is super important, beloved. And as you read on, you're going to see how important our prayers are to help people get out of prison, Heavenly Father. Please get all of our people out of prison in Jesus' name, out of Herod's, Roman centurions. Our, our modern-day Roman in charge is Michael Pompey. Today, the modern-day Roman in charge is Mon Michael Pam Pompey. Michael Pompey means Roman in charge. He meets with the, 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 the Jews in Babylon underground in meeting places. The Lord has shown me. So, you got modern-day uh, Herod. King Herod is Mon Michael Pompey. And he meets with those black hat-wearing Jews in underground places. And that's where... The hall of judgment is, is in underground place. And a man who was um, a, a sorcerer who claimed these men in uh, black with suit ties took him to this hall. And he claimed it was God and he had all these planets in his hands and the sun and the moon. And this man was uh, like using them with his hand. And this man he claimed was God, was Jesus, but it's not, beloved. That's the hall of judgment. That's a hall of Satan. We're going to read about that in the scriptures in John 18, 28 in the next video because I'm running out of time here. But um, he claimed that once he stopped doing witchcraft, he believed in Jesus, he went down into this hall. When I watched the video, I got very disturbed. Something was not right. It was off. And the Lord showed me that is not Jesus. That is another Jesus, another spirit that's using the sun, the moon, and the planets. And in the scriptures, in the epistle of Jude, planet means wandering, is a wandering star, the rebellion. That is what we're seeing in this, in, in what he went to. And he joined the Roman Catholic Church, beloved, after he had this experience. He says, I believe he's a deceitful worker of iniquity, posing as a Christian, but he's a fake Christian. So... The uh, epistle of Jude talks about the wandering stars, the planets, and John 18, 28 talk, talks about the hall of judgment where Jesus was taken, remember? So we're going to finish this in the next video. I hope this blesses you, and remember, pray for the saints that they get 